On today's show, time to meet Minnesota's own firewood lady. Every day she moves log trucks in, while firewood goes out in thousands of cords to be burned around the world. There we go, good gracious. Next, a winter getaway to the ice water of Saskatchewan where giant walleyes lurk and lurk and sometimes bite. Watch your bobbers. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. And our Minnesota Bound Classic this week goes to the island of Aruba. In search of sun and fish, we found both, plus a few big waves too. Those stories and more, next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know, if you're in Minnesota in the wintertime, you know what firewood's all about. A lot of firewood you see in front of the holiday stores, etc. But where does it come from? Well, then you ought to meet the firewood lady. If you've ever put another log on the fire, take a look at your log. then it's time you meet Angie Nelson. We'll probably take that other half of birch that you got. She is Minnesota's firewood lady. Do you burn wood yourself? Oh, absolutely, Ron. <laughs> Do you? Yes. Not just wintertime. All of this wood that you see across just this side right here. All the time. Is 1,100 cord. We ship this five times what you see here. Every we year. We ship out of here every year. How much bigger do you want to get? I'm good, Ron. Uh, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Every day, 24-7. I don't, I don't miss a day here in my wood yard. Angie is CEO of JN Firewood Incorporated in rural Fort Ripley, Minnesota. Are there bigger wood companies than you, firewood companies? Oh, sure there is. There? Not in Minnesota, no. Job description. How are you? Pretty good. Wood traffic manager, wood cutting superintendent for 12 employees. So I do all the book work here. Company accountant. But I do it at night. Mother of two school-aged boys. How do you find time to play the role of mother? Oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> and business partner. That's your husband, Joe, right? I'm the skid steer, yes. With her husband of 13 years. Is he a good worker? Joe Nelson. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On a recent winter day at company headquarters, it seemed like rush hour for logging trucks. Load after load, log after log stacked into piles. Nearby, nifty machines methodically and in minutes turned tree trunks into neatly cut and split firewood. The variety of wood satisfies their customers, ranging from Twin Cities restaurants needing wood for cooking pits to convenience stores who sell wood bundles to residential homes with fireplaces. All of which means every wood pile has its place. I need my red oak put over there by the fuel barrel. I need a roll of birch from the end of the logs down to the end and a roll of red oak processor wood down to the other end. Clearly, Angie knows her trees in what used to be a forest for men only. If you can get that by next Friday, you'd be sweetheart. Do you get uh, <laughs> a little pushback once in a while? I mean, like, uh, you're a not, woman, you don't know what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah huh? I do get that. Not not very often, but I do get it, yeah. yeah. Most of these guys that are around here that are unloading, and there are usual people that come in and out of here, so they're used to me um, telling them where to go, where I'd like my wood put, how much more of what I want because they deal with me here every single day. Without her here, it wouldn't be this big. <laughs> and that's the truth, too. Yeah. You know? Because I couldn't do it all. Husband Joe, however, is the family's entrepreneur. About 16, uh, started with a pickup truck. He started a firewood business as a teenager. To make extra money, uh, delivering it, selling it. Growing up in Fort Ripley. You know, uh, it was a hard way to do it back then. Uh, it's changed a lot now. You know, uh, it grew to this empire. What happens in this uh, silvery building? One key to their success. That there is a kiln dried. Happens in this building. Kiln dried heat treat certified firewood. What it is, it has to go into a kiln uh, and it's got to get heat treated at, at the center core. It has to stay at 140 degrees at the center core for, uh, I do believe, 12 hours, it's got it at the center core, which takes time. The high heat kills insects and diseases, meaning the wood is approved for shipping anywhere outside of Minnesota. We cover the whole United States. I mean, we've shipped wood all the way to Saudi Arabia in containers. They use it for cooking too, just like everybody else does. 
You know, just like our birch. I mean, our, the Minnesota birch, we ship it all over, a lot to the East Coast. I mean, we'll probably ship approximately three to four semi loads a week out there. The East Coast demand for white birch got a boost in December of 2011. It's, it started with a phone call, like anybody else would call and order would. When the Wall Street Journal ran a story about holiday gift ideas, including Minnesota Yule logs from Angie. These are what we call our decorative birch logs, or Yule logs. Something else you may not know, the firewood lady says winter is not the only busy season, and for good reason. Pinion pine, for example, for like in the summer months when you have a, a campfire. Minnesota is known for the largest mosquito, right, Ron? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that repels mosquitoes. To paraphrase Joyce Kilmer, a poem as lovely as a tree gives Joe and Angie a busy business when a campfire is mosquito-free. When we return, it's off across the northern border to the winter ice cape of Saskatchewan. Why? Lots of huge walleyes, that's why. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Renewal by Anderson, Connecticut, and by Rapala. Up next, an ice fishing adventure for you. We're going to go to Saskatchewan. Yes, way up north, because our man about the woods, Bill Shirk, thinks there's big walleyes up there. Well, he got there, and he wasn't so sure. And then something happened. Die-hard anglers go to the end of the world to catch a hot bite. On this trip, we're not quite that far, but it sure feels close. Fishing buddy Holly Chow lured me up to Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. She knows locals who know fishy spots. Dave, sure is nice to meet you. That's Dave Pewich, the guy with the logo. Oh, that's just, I'm just, I'm just Ukrainian and that's just my, my thing. That one's light. Dave and his buddies fish, religiously, a lake called Tobin. It's like nerves gearing up for this lake. You guys have me all jacked yeah. up. Tobin Lake is part of the Saskatchewan River system and has some of the largest walleyes in Canada in it. It's an incredible, incredible river system. I like this. David fishes here almost daily. We're counting on you. <laughs> we set up on a favorite big fish spot. Up here, no live bait and only barbless hooks. Way, what do you got? It's doing down pretty good. <laughs> Burbot. A burbot? So our first fish of the trip is gonna be an eel pout. Atta boy, well done. And it goes back without a peek. Oh, sorry. There he is, he's back. There he is in the corner. Come on, buddy. It's a little wally. Oh! That's a walleye. Seen him on the camera hit. He's a big walleye. Wow. He's a great big walleye. There we go. Good gracious. <laughs> and it's a dandy, at least in my book. Finally! Oh, he's small. He's only, he's only 5.6 pounds. Just another in a long list of Tobin Lake fish. That was kind of exciting, huh? David documents every fish he hooks. Today is my 84th day out here. Just how many fish we catch and how many we release. Of course, he's got pictures too. This is uh, my friend Les was 14.6. My nephew with a 9 on. That's a 12.10 walleye. Lots and lots and lots of pictures. You're grinning in every photo. Oh yeah, those are those are prizes, man. Lose them? Well, I'm gonna contend that was about a 12 pounder. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm scratching because I can't catch a thing. That's fish right there. Ooh. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Stick with me, boys. A tin foil fish. 
I should just let this rub all over your... They're stinky. Put them back now. Hurry up. You have to smoke them. Bro. All right, what's end do you like? <laughs> Poor fish. Even he looks chagrined. Days like this turn new friends into old buddies in a hurry. Oh, I like that head down. Head shake. Oh, drag. And it's gone. Oh. David seems to be the only guy able to hook a fish. I'm sorry, what can I do? You know, <laughs> just keep catching, baby. Yeah. But before this day ends, oh. Tobin Lake will change me. Oh. You feel a lion forever. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Okay, we've been waiting for the giant walleyes to show up in Saskatchewan. Will it happen? The answer oh. next. Oh boy. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard, premier manufacturers of maintenance free outdoor patio furniture and accessories from recycled plastic. Time now to continue our Saskatchewan walleye fishing adventure and find out, will that big one bite? <laughs> Way up in Saskatchewan. You're on television, smile. <laughs> the Tobin Lake crew puts on a show. Well, I'm stuck in Tulabee town. We call them tinfoils around here. They're like a piece of, like of tinfoil. I came to Saskatchewan to catch tulabees. <laughs> David Piewicz fishes Tobin Lake three days a week. I'm retired now, so this is what I do. I enjoy fishing, and some days it's good, some days it's bad. Today, our fishing lands somewhere in between. After all, not every trip goes as planned. Look at this. I do have a dream of seeing one of those giant fish, though. You want me to hold the picture up again? <laughs> <laughs> Too bad we're out of time. The only decent walleye we saw was David's five pounder. Oh well, maybe next time. That could be a piker. That's a big fish. Gosh, look at the size of that. Oh, hey, you got him. Ooh. Okay, this is sturgeon material, boys. Oh, oh boy. Yep, yeah, this is what Bill's got him, finally. This is awesome. Feel a line, you feel a line. Just don't want to get too much. Tell me when you see him. Make sure you're in the center of the hole. Jeez. I got a coach now. Well yeah, because he'll he'll touch he'll touch the edge of the ice and he'll be gone, eh? Breathe. <laughs> yeah, breathe, breathe. I'll breathe once he's out. Well, I don't know what this is. Or a big ugly. Oh. Really would you say that? Just reel him in, Bill. He doesn't want to come up. 10 pound walleyes don't like to be seen. God, I hope it's a walleye. What do you see? I <sighs> see a big <laughs> walleye. Don't move it. Got him, buddy. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Whoa! Whoa! Look at that. That's a dandy. Oh. In a four-minute fight. Good gracious. How's that? A once-in-a-lifetime catch. <laughs> That's a beauty. Hey, what do you think? Oh, man. Don't, don't. Can't see your face. Can't see your face behind the fish. Oh, is that a nice picture? For guys like me, this is the fish of a lifetime. This is why you come to Tobin Lake. You got it? Yeah. 14. 14, you got that number? 14. 15 pounds on the nose and just over 33 and a half inches long. That is sweet. This is the biggest walleye I've ever seen. Congratulations, Bill. That's beautiful. Look at how nice he is, eh? Yep. Ready? That's a dandy. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful, man. Oh, that's good. In one hook set, one fish proves the old fishy cliché. 
you never know, the next fish could be the big one. This is called Paradise Mat. Still ahead, in search of sun and good fishing around the island of Aruba, a mystery island just waiting to be discovered. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Hennepin County Medical Center, Minnesota Agricultural Water Resources Coalition, Minnesota Soybean Farmers and their Checkoff, Time for our Minnesota Bound Classic, and if you're like me, you're a little tired of snow and ice, so let's head to a place where there is no ice, and the trees are green, and the fish, well, they might be biting. Real, 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 he says. It's a wahoo, huh? In a wahoo, it was. It's a little guy. In fact, Wahoo is a pretty good word to describe what was happening this day. The Caribbean was Wahoo wild. Charlie's turn next. Fishing companion Charlie Scandori rode the waves to reach a Wahoo goal. Getting a little heavier. I never caught a Wahoo before. It's one, something I've always wanted to do, and I accomplished that today. That's pretty good. The world of Wahoo in a wonderful place, the island of Aruba. For visiting anglers, Aruba also has its own extremes. Wind-driven fishing seas on one coast, calm fishing water on the leeward side. Landlubbers like Charlie and me decided a couple of wahoo were enough as Captain Monty Lopez guided his fishing boat into calmer water. Look at him. And. We got tuna looks like on top. More fishing action. Well, we saw some birds and under the birds were some tuna. And uh, I like to fish with light tackle, so... <laughs> That's what I like. <laughs> the whales that are passing through the Caribbean, they come here after the tuna, and the tuna jumps off out of the water because the whale or um, bigger fish is chasing them. Oh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. A snapshot of our catch ended one story about Aruba's fishing picture, but the next chapter starts with World War II and the day a German freighter sunk not far from the island's sand beaches. Today, this reminder of war is a favorite diving destination for visitors. And the historic beach now is occupied by hotels and footprints. Beyond the fishing marinas, friendly restaurants serve fresh fish while seagulls play in the wind, and Caribbean music floats over this island getaway. But for Arthur Giel, Fishing still goes on like the old days. This is herring, small herring, and this is silver sight. And Arthur still comes to the fishing hotspot, the old German shipwreck. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, lost it. Lost it. These fish don't fool around. Whoa, whoa. What do we got there? The yellow thing. Not big, just pretty. Nice fish on Aruba. And plenty of them hanging around the sunken fish magnet. Is that right? I think this is duck snapper, I think. Oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah. A duck snapper? Duck snapper. You can see the, the, the teeth. By any name, this was Aruba's idea of a fishing utopia. Just too much fun to quit. Fishing in Aruba. <laughs> huh? Yeah, he's tired and I'm tired. Lots of memories from Aruba, but one of them was the fact that on one side of the island, things were calm, and the other side, the wind was wild. Kind of strange. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sharon, of course, the star of the show, who did not get to go to Aruba, was Raven. Guests appearing on Minnesota Bound receive gift certificates to Crave restaurants. Fresh, vibrant, American. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.
For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.